Welcome ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time coming to the channel, well, we do a little bit of everything here. We do automotive, we do pinball, we do DIY, and we do machining. So today is all about, yes, the Tundra, the 2023 Tundra. So for those of you who haven't seen, Toyota has released a pretty massive recall that has 2022 and 2023 Toyota Tundras and the Lexus LS600 is all involved in this engine failure recall. Now the recall only pertains to certain vehicle VIN numbers and none of the hybrids are actually included. Now my Tundra has just turned 33,568 miles on the odometer and honestly, she's been pretty flawless. Now that doesn't mean this motor is not gonna blow because there's any point in time you can have an engine failure and well, you could try to prevent it, but you're never gonna be able to prevent it. Let's be honest. Now, some of you that watched some of the previous videos, while well, I kind of ended up taking some of you guys' advice, I decided to go ahead and send in a sample to Blackstone and actually find out what's going on inside this motor. Now, for those of you that don't know, Blackstone is a company that actually does oil analysis testing. This is not paid for by any means by them, not sponsored by them. I paid for it out of my own pocket, but I wanted to find out, you know, what do we have going on with this thing? Now, before we get into the oil analysis, I wanted to let you guys know that we're going to be doing an awesome giveaway when we hit our 1,000 subscribers. So you got to hit that subscribe button down below. When we hit that 1,000, I'm going to let you know what to do in order to get into this drawing. We're going to have cool merchandise that we're going to have given out, and we're going to have a gift card for one of you lucky viewers out there. So stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button. Now, when I sent this off to be analyzed, I had 31,427 miles at the time that I sent the oil sample off. And then on that oil change itself, it had 1,647 miles on it. Oil analysis really aren't good for one time only. You really want to keep up and do a trend and find out what is going on over a time frame because each engine can be a little bit different. So what may be standard for one may be a little different for another. So it's best to actually have a basically a series of these done and kind of keep an eye on the trend. Are, are more of the wear metals actually showing up later on? Is it kind of in spec or does it seem to be drastically out there? So for that, we're actually gonna do not only this test, but we're gonna send one off at 5,000 miles and I'm gonna send one off before I do the 10,000 mile oil change that Toyota does. So we're gonna do a couple samples on this go around along with in the future, we're gonna keep this thing up and see what actually happens. So if you're taking a look at this actual oil analysis that I received back, Everything looks good so far, but that doesn't mean I'm in the clear. Like I said, this oil change had roughly 1,650 miles, let's just say, on the actual oil sample that was sent in. And the average that they used on this was a 4,700 mile engine. And once again, each engine can be a little different, so you really need to do multiples in order to find out where your engine, kind of set your baseline and find out where you're at and what is actually wearing in this thing. Now on these oil analysis, your wear metals are typically going to be like, for instance, on Blackstone here, everything from titanium up is a wear metal. The rest of those are pretty much kind of, I believe they're more of like lubrication factors that are in the oil itself and like detergents that are in the oil, not necessarily pertaining to any type of wear of some sort. The far right column is what you see is known as the universal averages. That is basically a V6 motor, this type of V6 motor that had roughly 4,700 miles on it at the time the oil was taken. Now, if you look on the far left column, that is what my motor actually registered at. So for instance, aluminum was actually one part per million lower, uh, along with iron, which was four parts per million lower. The copper was another four parts per million lower. Uh, you get to the lead, all that was zeroed out. 10, I was one part per million higher. Not None of this is really critical. Like these are pretty minuscule numbers. As far as actual motor wear, like there's not really nothing that is out of line. Silver, I had three parts per million versus the two parts per million. Looking at this, this is just gonna be our baseline for our future test. Now we do have the engine recall notice that was sent to me. I did finally get it. And well, it, it doesn't really give much information other than of course you're a part of the recall. Now, according to that, there's still not technically a remedy, but if you actually look on Toyota's website, on the newsroom, it states that all motors that are part of this recall will be replaced. Now, the assumption there is from the wording that it's gonna be an entire long block 
And I'm sure they're probably not putting it on the letters just yet because they're still trying to devise a plan of how they're going to replace almost 100,000 of these things. I'm going to keep you guys updated on what we find out next from Toyota. And when we hit 5,000 miles on this oil sample, I'm going to send it in and we're going to have those results along with the 10,000 coming up. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen to this motor as far as how these trends are going to progress. Now, I have also heard of cases where you get you know, beautiful, clean results on an oil analysis and then have it blow up in a matter of short time between this and your next oil change. So that could still happen. And guys, stay tuned because I'm going to bring you guys along for the process of this tire recall. What's actually going to happen when I actually speak to a dealer? What's the process of it? What's the loaner going to be? Because there are a lot of unanswered questions that a lot of us or a lot of you have. And, you know, I kind of have, but I'm really not terribly worried about it. At the end of the day, truck's been great. I've made it this far. If it goes, it goes. It's part of the deal. At least Toyota is stepping up to make the thing right. For those of you who think I should be pissed off at Toyota and I should be trying to sell this thing, well, that's not how I work. So you guys are more than welcome to, to do your vehicles how you want to, but you know, at least Toyota in my eyes is doing the right thing by actually putting this recall out there for us owners. And I mean, let's be honest, I'm going to get a new motor. So I, you know, I've already put 33,000. I'm going to have 40,000 miles of this thing easily before I have a motor replaced. So uh, honestly, I just kind of hope they let me go until it does blow and then replace it then. So if I get 200,000 on this motor and then uh, replace it at that point, I'd be happy, but I I'm sure that's not going to be the case. Stay tuned because we've got all that coming up soon on that. Plus we got more pinball content, more machining content coming up for you guys. Some more DIY getting ready to happen. And uh, well, Appreciate you guys, but don't forget when we hit that 1000 mark, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of you lucky winners are going to win some hat and shirt merch along with one of you is going to win an awesome gift card. So hit that subscribe button below. That's going to do it for this one. We'll catch you next time.